Hello everybody and welcome back to 4th Age Guides. In this episode we're looking at the battle prospects for the reunited kingdom of Gondor and Arnor in the 4th Age Total War Dominion of Men. This is one of the stronger factions in the mod and as such the, uh, the battles will be fairly intuitive for you but we do want to take a look at some of their quirks, some of their strengths, and some of their hidden strengths perhaps. I'm going to go ahead and pause the action here while we look at the individual units uh, so we can get a sense of uh, your core roster, a few of the uh, units that are available from outlying territories and then once the battle is over we'll go back to the custom battle screen to take a closer look at all of the units you can train uh, at least those that are not considered local levies or things like that so we'll start with your bodyguard unit this like many factions is a heavy cavalry unit uh, the Knights of the White Tree uh, quite strong very capable of course not a terribly large unit size for these uh, of course the exception to that will be your faction leader and heir typically but for the most part these are going to do uh, just as you would expect I have them paired up here with a unit of Knights of Dol Amroth this is another bodyguard unit and the reunited kingdom is actually very wealthy in the uh, bodyguard units it, it has uh, we've got your your typical bodyguard unit that's going to be for all of the family members that come of age or are adopted or marry into the family uh, but then you have the option to train a few others Knights of Dol Amroth are perhaps the most impressive and iconic of those and uh, as you would imagine they are available in Dol Amroth you have to build up your barracks there and then you can eventually train these guys you will get a family member in addition to the unit itself and this is a very um, in some ways it, it's an upgrade to the Knights of the White Tree typically a smaller unit size uh, but they have a great uh, effect on the battle wherever they go and so I've paired them here with the other bodyguard unit uh, just thinking that there'll be kind of a force multiplier there while we're here we can take a look at a couple of the other cav units that are maneuvering around the field uh, sticking with the Dol Amroth theme we also have a, a another heavy cav unit the Dol Amroth men at arms these are a bit not as strong as your Knights of Dol Amroth or they don't have quite as many abilities and again we'll look at this more closely in the custom battle screen uh, but they have a much larger unit size and they're going to serve as probably your heaviest and most reliable cavalry although the fact that they can only be trained from those Dol Amroth provinces is going to limit their availability for you as you expand though you will find some other options uh, one of the most notable ones and one of my favorites is the Harondor Outriders uh, this is a javelin and sword unit they've got a shield they've got decent armor and so they're recruited from the regions of Harondor so just south of the river Poros and north of the Harnan this is a territory you can get into fairly early in the game of course you just have to cross the Anduin and get down on the other side of the Poros if you do that and you tech up probably the chief city down there you will be able to train these guys so a very interesting uh, lighter cav for uh, for uh, the reunited kingdom which doesn't typically get a lot of variety in its riders so I would definitely recommend picking these up your other cavalry unit that does not appear here is uh, the horsemen of Gondor I believe they're called they are essentially uh, King's swordsmen mounted and as such they act more as a as kind of like a mounted infantry unit in, in a sense they don't have a fantastic charge uh, they they are not uh, you know they're not spear armed of course but they are going to provide you with some mobility on the battlefield and that is going to be important as you get into situations where you rout the enemy but are maybe not able to chase them down so it's useful to have a couple of units of cav in your armies and the horsemen of Gondor are probably going to be what you can afford initially let's take a look though at the infantry arm because this is going to be in a lot of ways the most iconic and impressive uh, part of the reunited kingdom and top of that list you're going to find guards of the citadel these have uh, two-handed uh, pull arms effective against armor extremely strong however they are somewhat vulnerable to missile fire in the right conditions they uh, are very heavily armored but they lack a shield so that's going to uh, you know interfere with their ability to block or prevent uh, arrow damage so uh, you typically do want to use them as an anti-cavalry unit they can be extremely effective there but if they're pinned down by uh, by infantry or if they take a lot of javelins or arrows from elite archers then that can be a problem for them uh, you do start with a unique version of this unit actually three of them the company of the guard they start right off in your capital in uh, minus honor those three units in particular are not 
trainable, but they are retrainable. So you'll never be able to train them from scratch, but if they take losses, you can bring them back to Minus Honor. As long as you have the highest level barracks there, you can retrain them. These guards of the Citadel that you can get in custom battles are the slightly weaker version of the company of the guard, but only slightly. So uh, initially you probably won't be training these guys because you have those three uh, units that are superior in some ways. But as the campaign progresses, you may want to have one or two elsewhere. Typically, though, I don't find much need to have these uh, you know, in my armies. A unit that you will make a lot of use of, especially in your wars against Harad and uh, potentially any other Haradrian factions, is the Mariners. Uh, these guys can be trained at port settlements. Uh, they also need some other prerequisites to be met. I think you need to have a naval haven, which requires uh, the timber resource. Uh, and you do need to build up your barracks as well. Once you do, you'll be rewarded with these quite versatile units. Uh, they have a couple of javelins and they also have uh, pretty effective swords. So they're going to be a good unit to have just in a, in a melee line like this because in addition to the, uh, just the typical damage they're going to do in a fight, they will also get the javelin for a bit of a one-two punch. So definitely train a few of these. And again, they're going to be easy to train and retrain along the coastlines. So keep an eye out for settlements where that can happen. Uh, uh, maybe one of the most iconic units is the men-at-arms. This is just your solid Dunedainic swordsman. Uh, so they have the shield wall capability, not all units. Uh, in your armies uh, do get this ability, uh, but the men-at-arms do. In fact, maybe the men-at-arms are the only ones who do. Your, your other spears don't, uh, but in any case, they are a very strong unit, and uh, using the shield wall, they can sort of maintain their stamina and maintain a pretty cohesive uh, and immovable line. So definitely worth getting a few of these uh, to sort of stiffen the ranks here. Less of a of a of an iconic unit, but uh, certainly widespread and very capable are the King Swordsmen. These are a tier two infantry unit, and they work as you would expect uh, for a tier two unit. They're quite strong compared to the, that tier of other nations' uh, comparable units, I guess you could say. But they're going to be vulnerable vulnerable to certain things. Of course, cav charges, uh, skirmisher units can do some real damage to them, so that's something to watch out for. And I think the only other unit we haven't seen uh, is the King Spearman here. So this is a, you know, a, a more shielded up Guards of the Citadel, but without armor piercing and with a bit worse stats. Uh, they're going to be more widely available, of course. So you will want to uh, want to get a couple of units for the flanks for some of those armies that that need it. And a, a very interesting unit that addresses one of the, the weak points of your roster is the Lasarnak Axemen. So these guys have uh, two-handed axes, of course. They are effective against armor, and that is really the key. They're only trainable from a single settlement, Arnak, just to the west or southwest of Minas Anor. And so that's the reason, these guys are the reason I always go for a military policy in Arnak, because without it, you can't train them. You need to get to that third tier of barracks. Uh, so what I've done here is put them over on the left flank. We've got the trees here. You know, the idea is to get them in among the enemy infantry and not to be caught out where, uh, in the open where uh, the enemy cavalry may get a good charge in against them. I also like to keep them back from the front line. You'll notice that the AI deploys these guys typically right in the mix in the middle of your, your main melee line, uh, but you don't want them to get caught on the charge. They're, they're very capable in melee, very good armor, uh, but they're not going to last forever if they just have a stand-up fight, and so you really want them to be doing flanking and stuff. Uh, we should also talk about your ranged capability, which is also excellent. You get Citadel Catapults. Uh, you start with a unit. Uh, again, you want to make good, good use of that. The secret to using these against troops is to just putting them on fire at will and setting them to the flaming ammo. And you'll see we are going to do just a massive amount of damage here. We've already done uh, great, great things uh, over here. So a lot of guys go down when they get hit. This is a, a fantastic unit to have. One unit in an army is, is usually plenty because your troops are going to be able to hold to keep the enemy off of it, and they'll just be able to keep bombarding. Now, the problem with this unit is if you start to get clever and do a lot of flanking, you can hit your own guys pretty easily, and that can be a disaster. So you do want to just be aware of where they're hitting, and don't be afraid to uh, you know, select targets on them. 
Uh, we should also talk about archers because you get a lot of options here as well. Uh, King's Longbowmen are your, your probably your bread and butter archers. You get four of these in an army and you're going to feel superior for a very long time. You know, eventually you may want to train a few more. Uh, but King's Longbowmen, the thing about them that I would note is that it's not just that they are really effective as archers, but they are extremely good in melee too, surprisingly so. So these Longbowmen with the, with the heavy armor are going to stand up better than you'd expect. They're going to kill things faster than you'd expect with their swords. So really don't be afraid to use them as flankers uh, or to use them to sort of close the bag of an enemy engagement. You'll see I do end up bringing some of these guys around uh, to hit the flanks as well. So a very good unit here. Um, another one is uh, Blackroot Veil Bowmen. What these guys have in, in terms of an advantage is just range. I don't. I think that's the only benefit they get compared to, say, the King's Longbowmen. Let's see if we can get the. Yeah, we can't get the unit card here, but we'll look at it in the custom battle screen. Uh, but in any case, yeah, these guys have a bit of a range bonus. They're only available in a single settlement, which is uh, Mornin, the, uh, the Morthond Vale settlement. It's kind of in an awkward p place in your realm, a little north of Dol Amroth, so a little far from the front. Uh, but you know, you. St I think you start with a unit actually in the campaign. And if you get to a second tier barracks, you can train them. So may as well, they're going to uh, be of special use in the Dunland front because their extra range there and their relatively cheap cost compared to the King's Longbowmen is going to mean you will be uh, doing a lot of damage to Dunland's armies, which tend to be lightly armed. Uh, the other archer unit here today is the White Company. This is another bodyguard unit. You can train these at Emin Arnon. And it will, uh, when you do, you'll get a family member out of it. So uh, this is a very, very strong unit as well, something that you may want to use in melee if the situation is right. But I was a bit hesitant with these guys because we've got some dangerous units running around. We've got uh, some heavy cav, although I was distracting them with my own cav. And you can see off in the distance there, uh, there are some Uruk Berserkers who could theoretically tear through uh, this infantry unit. So you do want to be careful with them and not let them get, uh, get hurt too badly. So let's go back to the to the uh, the end here. What we um we had was a fairly even match. We had uh, catapults and ballistas of Adunabar who were hitting us, and so I knew that early on I wanted to dispatch my cavalry to deal with that. Uh, but the enemy heavy cav uh, kept pursuing me and made that a little difficult. I was able to clear out the enemy crews with my outriders, uh, but the Dol Amroth men at arms uh, took quite a punishment at the hands of these shadow risers. However, with the two of these units teamed up, we are going to get them to rout. Uh, then it's going to be a bit of a dance, because we don't want to get caught by these Uruk Berserkers or Uruk Swords. Even though in the right conditions with full strength units, we could charge them and uh, do a lot of damage. So we're just seeing those heavy cav off. And, uh, you know, on, on one view of things, we have succeeded by taking these guys out of the fight. At this point, though, We've got the, the army essentially on the run, and so we are just going to be... Yeah, there goes the general. We're just going to be pursuing them and then getting our heavy cav to line up and charge, or at least threaten those last two units. But otherwise, the tactics are fairly straightforward. You've got your archers in front. You've got a catapult here that's uh, basically bombarding the enemy and forcing them uh, to attack you, where your heavy infantry is going to just form an impenetrable wall while your cavalry and other units like your axemen uh, flank to uh, deal the killing blow. At this point, you should probably take these guys off fire at will and halt so that you don't end up killing your own men. Uh, but we'll speed the action up here because we are going to get these last two units routed as soon as we get all of our cav back together and formed up. We did a few repeated charges with the, uh, the Knights of Dol Amroth, and that was very effective. Our bodyguard and this uh, knight's unit was able to do some flanking and just quickly route some fairly elite infantry such as Swords of the Shadow. So we'll get a nice look at this charge here that should be pretty effective against these Uruk Berserkers. Yeah, so that cleaned out. Uh, yeah, they're just like another second or two and they're going to be uh, routing. With them routing, the last other unit routes as well. So we had uh, 726 survivors out of, out of 1014. We wiped out a lot. Let's take a look at the casualties inflicted. Yeah, the Knights of Dol Amroth did a lot there. I think they have a fear effect as well, which we'll verify in a moment. 
Uh, the Citadel Catapults did 143 casualties. They are the rock stars of this battle, which is to be expected. And since they're not chasing down routers, that's just straight up deaths. That's not like the Lasarnic Axemen got 124 casualties. Some of that's probably them chasing down uh, fleeing enemies. Um, so it's a little, uh, it's not a perfect representation of their effectiveness in battle. But the Citadel Catapults taking out 143 men. Uh, yeah, that's that, that's pretty good. So in the early game, uh, you're going to have to be careful because of the other catapults and ballistas uh, that a Dunabar can train. But eventually, once you take care of those units, you will reign supreme with your uh, siege weapons. Now, I didn't bring any city ballistas in that last fight because these just have a much more impact and so probably you're going to be using citadel catapults if you're going to be using anything uh, especially I think early in the game you start off able to train either of these so you may as well go with the citadel catapults uh, rather than than spend the money on ballistas I can't think of a situation in which I would choose ballistas over catapults honestly um, yeah, so maybe, let me know if, if there's something I'm missing here. Uh, the attack is just higher. I think the range is much better. Just the, the splash damage is superior. So in any case, uh, what we saw at that uh, in, in that battle was most of what you could train. So we'll go through now and look at the more, um, uh, the more sort of step-by-step -step what it would look like at the various tiers of recruitment. So to start at tier one, you're going to get Kingdom Militia. And, you know, you may think, okay, this is just, let's just move on from here and not bother with these guys. But uh, in the west of your territory, in Western Gondor, you're going to want to have a few of these guys trained and, uh, and keep them up because they're going to be a major part of your Dunland fight, depending on how that goes. Uh, Dunland does have a lot of men in its armies, typically. They have a lot of ranged units, so what you're going to want is numbers yourself. And one way to do that is by bringing these guys. They're not the cheapest, uh, but they are the most numerous unit you can train in terms of the unit size. So that's going to help mitigate some of the damage that Dunland's like archers or javelins can do, just because you have a, a unit that can absorb it, essentially. Uh, and also, they're all you're going to be able to get for a little while. So uh, Kingdom Militia, you're definitely worth it. But in terms of garrison duty, you, what you really want is your Bowmen of Gondor. These guys have something like an upkeep of 90, I want to say, maybe even 70. It's fairly low, uh, and so it may be a little higher than that. But it's uh, it's certainly about half or or less than half of the upkeep of the, uh, the Kingdom Militia. So don't let the name throw you. These guys do not need to be your garrison troop, and they probably shouldn't be. Once you can start training Bowmen... I like to train them uh, and just get them out to my territories, especially my homelands, bring the militia to the front because you can actually use them in battle. And then the Bowmen of Gondor can be a much more cost-effective garrison for you. Of course, these guys did not appear in the last uh, in the battle we just saw, but they are effective and you're going to want to use them in, in battle as well. So they have a use outside of, outside of garrison duty also. In the north, though, Instead of Bowmen of Gondor, of course, you're going to find Iriador Hunters. These guys are cheaper than the Bowmen of Gondor. They have a larger unit size. However, they are worse in terms of, uh, in terms of melee. Uh, so a bit worse attack, a bit worse uh, missile attack as well. And so these guys are just going to be a little less robust. Uh, but that doesn't matter too much. In the north, you want to have a fairly cheap unit like this. Again, for garrison duty, but also just to give some ranged advantage, especially in those wars against the Dunabar, who tends to bring a lot of orcs to that particular theater. So this is a Tier 2 unit that replaces the Bowmen of Gondor at that level. Uh, otherwise, at Tier 2, you'll find King's Swordsman. Uh, fairly straightforward. Again, this is a, a notable improvement over your uh, Kingdom Militia. Uh, so definitely train them, especially in the north, in, uh, in like Enumenas. This is a good cost-effective unit for you to train. You're going to have some militia troops for sure. You're going to have some archers, but you're going to need a relatively solid line. And in the north, you'll find that you're not very well developed. So there's not a ton of, uh, of infrastructure up there just yet. So King Swordsman uh, will really help strengthen that infantry line. Uh, the Gondorian Horsemen are another unit that's going to be, I believe it's Tier 2 as well. And again, these are only going to be available in the south. 
this is a 33-man cav unit, so not super large, uh, but it's going to be effective enough for what it has to do. They've got a pretty good defense, uh, and so what I would tend to use them for is attacking like light skirmishers, especially if you're facing a, a faction like Harandor or Harad that tend to bring javelin throwers. This would be a great unit to send. Get a couple of units of Gondorian horsemen and deal with the enemy archers or javelins and uh, you should be pretty effective there. They're not going to deliver a superb charge like some of your other cav uh, with the twice or thrice uh, the, the, the charge bonus, but they're going to be uh, robust enough for what you need. In the north, you're not going to get Gondorian horsemen, but instead you will find Eriador riders. Now, the, the problem with this unit, or the, the it's not really a problem, but you may find that you're using the mercenary variant of this, which is fairly common, uh, rather than the unit that you can train. Uh, for one reason, the, the mercenaries don't drain your population, and for another, they don't require any infrastructure, of course, so you can just recruit them out of the field when you need them. Now, on the other hand, the mercenaries are going to be more expensive. They're going to be quite a blow to your per-turn cost because they have a fairly high upkeep as well. Uh, but, you know, if you're in an emergency type of situation, th these guys or the mercenary variant are going to be very effective. Let's see, once we get into the higher tiers, uh, right, tier 2 is also Blackroot Veil Bowman. Um, so I guess they'd go like over here. These guys are going to replace the, uh, the Bowman of Gondor in that one settlement of, uh, of Mornin. Uh, at tier 3... We start to see things like Lasarnic Axemen, uh, I guess Men at Arms, King Spearman would be, would be a third tier unit as well. And again, these guys all have very different roles, as you may expect. Lasarnic Axemen for taking out uh, armor, Men at Arms for essentially holding the line, uh, but also fighting spears or things like that, and King Spearman for basically holding against Cav. You, we also have your Guards of the Citadel to do that. Uh, these guys have the, the other thing that they don't have that I that I or they do have that I didn't mention in the video was a battle standard. Uh, the company of the guard have that as well, so that's just going to be another bonus to help the already decent morale of your army be that much better. All right, some other stuff we get here. Let's just go down the line, I guess, at this point. We'll, we'll sort of group them as they come. Uh, Rangers of Athelion, as you would imagine, are only available uh, in Athelion. That's M and Arnon, essentially. And you know what? I don't, I'm don't. i not 100% sure if they're available in Minas Ithil after you rebuild it. Minas Ithil begins as essentially a ruined fort, but you can invest a lot of money and turn it into a full-fledged settlement. So they may be available there as well. Uh, but these guys uh, are, are ranger units, and we should probably talk about them in conjunction with the rangers of the north. They do have a little bit different use. Uh, but they're both a, a kind of a hybrid unit, and I think that does confound people. And, you know, how are they supposed to be used? Well, you wouldn't use them just as frontline archers, right? Because for one thing, they're going to be hard to train and replace. Uh, typically, rangers are going to have a... a pretty limited recruitment area. You're going to get them out of one or two settlements uh, since they may need specialization buildings. The rangers of the north need the uh, the ranger hold, which is pre-built in Bree, by the way. That's another thing I forgot to mention in the in the United Kingdom campaign guide video. So you can get these guys in Bree as soon as you build a, a tier two barracks because they've got some of the infrastructure already there. Kind of a nice nod to, you know, a strider hanging around at Bree. Uh, so both of these guys are limited in their recruitment pool, but They've both got decent defense and a pretty decent melee attack, especially the Rangers of the North with a, with a, a two-handed sword, actually. So you want to be careful with them. You don't want to just have them in the front line uh, eating enemy arrows, but you want to have them maybe back a bit uh, behind your infantry or on the flanks in an ambush with fire at will turned off. And then when the fight gets going, they can start sniping, uh, you know, from, from the, the flanks or the rear and getting some rear charges in as well. So you have to micromanage them is what I'm trying to say. They're not just a fire and forget kind of unit. We also saw the White Company as a very, very strong that defense of 31. Uh, so yeah, don't be afraid to use these guys in melee. Uh, but, and you, actually no, you don't start off with one. Uh, Adunabar starts off with their variant of that. But... 
it does take a while to get them. You're going to need to capture Emin Arnon, uh, build it up very high, uh, and you do want to be a little careful with them. So you want to make sure they enter an engagement that uh, that is appropriate. So basically, don't send them against armor-piercing stuff. Don't send them against berserkers, uh, or, or or leave them to be charged by Cav. Another archer unit, yet another one, uh, is Guards of the Haven. These guys are unique to Umbar. So this is a reward for you heading down south and taking Umbar for yourself. Spear and bow armed elite guards of the walls and palaces of Umbar. So they have a, a longbow essentially. It's Think of them as um, like guards of the citadel slash king's longbowmen. If you combine those two units, you'd get something like this. Uh, they don't have the, uh, the battle standard to inspire the nearby troops. Uh, they don't have the armor piercing of these guys either, but they are very solid, very high defense of 29 with no upgrades and, uh, and, a, and a strong attack as well, good missile attack. So a great unit to get uh, and a nice reward for getting down there. All right, Gray Company. Okay, this is another bodyguard unit. We talked about uh, just your Cav Bodyguard, Knights of Dol Amroth, White Company, and Gray Company. So this is one that is available. Uh, actually, you begin with a unit of these. Uh, he is in uh, weather top at the beginning of the campaign. The the body the family member that's inside uh, the I'm blanking on the name now. You're gonna take my Tolkien card away. Uh, weather top the uh, hilltop. I mean, it's gonna come to me in a second, and I'll kick myself. Uh, but in any case, they're in that settlement, and so what I would recommend is getting them out of that early, so they don't get trapped inside a fort and get them out into the field where they belong, because this is a horse archer slash sword uh, unit with, a again, a pretty respectable defense, decent charge, uh, good attack, good missile attack, small unit size, uh, but you can definitely run them around the battlefield, uh, you know, spend their arrows, and then charge them when the enemy is tired, and they're going to perform surprisingly well. So definitely, uh, definitely make use of these guys. All right. Amon Sul, there it is. All right, there it is. King's Horsemen. Okay, this is a this is an unusual unit because they're they're a um, I think they're only available in horse provinces. They need the horse resource, so you you can't train them everywhere. You can't train them in uh, Minas Anor, for example. But if you were to conquer a place that has the horse resource and you set it to military and you tech up uh, very high, you can get them. So this is a, a strong unit. Uh, they have a sword and a shield, so they're kind of like men-at-arms, uh, but I tend not to see them very much in my campaigns, in part because of that, that recruitment um, issue. It's just you, things have to come together quite well, so keep an eye out for them in your settlements with a horse resource and uh, see if they'll be worth it. Now, if you compare them to you know, a unit like the Gondorian Horsemen, uh, these guys have an attack of 7, defense of 28, a charge of 13, and so they're going to be, you know, better in, in uh, all of those stats than the Gondorian Horsemen. But it's a question of, do you want to go with these guys, or would you rather go with, say, the Dol Amroth Men-at-Arms, which are going to have a charge of 25, um, a slightly less defense, and slightly worse attack. So, you know, there's a bit of a trade-off, I suppose. I would tend to go with these because they're blue. So <laughs> that's how I think about it. But also, the spears. I think the charge is really important. Uh, and so I, I would probably lean towards these guys. They also have a larger unit size, but I confess I have uh, basically no experience with these guys in a campaign setting. Of course, the uh, Knights of Dol Amroth are just superb. They frighten the nearby enemy, which is, I don't think that's something your, your bodyguard even does. No. So this is actually your only scary unit. So um, it's worth getting these guys out into the field because once you've, if you're fighting like uh, Harad, let's say. Those guys tend to have fairly low morale. You're going to be doing a lot of damage to them with, with, a, with, with your armies typically, but then the fear effect of this unit is going to, be, uh, going to be a fantastic addition. So absolutely worth it, worth the high cost and the small unit size. Uh, definitely go for that. And again, the Hirondor Outriders, uh, absolutely uh, recommended as well. So we have a, a pretty interesting roster that does cover a lot of ground 
It, sh it really has no strong weaknesses that I can think of. You know, maybe the weakness is readily available shock cav, right? Because you do get shock cav in the form of Dol Amroth men at arms and the Knights of Dol Amroth and your bodyguard. But other than that, you've both you, you've essentially got um, uh, sword armed cav, uh, or, or with the exception of these are rider riders. So. I guess that's one thing, but it hardly feels like a weakness when you have such excellent units. Uh, it's just a matter of logistically getting them where they need to be in the front. Uh, but again, you'll find that you will excel at keeping your men in the field uh, because of the high natural defense armor stats of your units. They won't tend to take grievous losses. So unlike if you're playing a faction like Rune or Harad, where you'll have to be retraining men with some frequency because of the, the relatively large losses they'll take, with the Reunited Kingdom, you can take a, a an army from the beginning of the campaign and march it all the way to Nern. And you'll find that you, know, you maybe have to supply them with some extra men every now and then, uh, but it's not going to be like you need to abandon uh, your progress. You can be careful with your units. It's fairly intuitive to set up this, the, uh, the battle tactics for them, and you're going to do fairly well. So I hope this has helped. Uh, the Reunited Kingdom is, again, a pretty straightforward faction to use in the battlefield. It's just a matter of knowing what's what's good and you know what's what's surprisingly good. Again, I would say the King's Longbowman. Uh, this is the one thing I'd recommend that that I missed for a very long time uh, is that these guys are really effective in melee. So I was always a little hesitant about them and just worried about you know uh, about them getting into into fights and keeping them back from the melee line. And I I could all along have used them much more aggressively than I was. And so that meant that I, I was not using them to their full potential. So in any case, I uh, hope you've enjoyed this look at the Reunited Kingdom, uh, and I hope you'll stick around for the next episode. Till then, everybody, take care.